Welcome to the fourth video of the series of tutorials on 2A ANOVA with R. In this video, we are going to see how to build a high-quality scatter plot for the final presentation of the results when we have two explanatory variables. In a nutshell, I will show you how to go from a plot like this to a plot like this. So let's start. We are going to start by loading the appropriate libraries, the read R to load the data from a CSV file, and the ggplot2 for the plots. Now the first step of the analysis is to load and check the data file. The data is from an experiment conducted to study the influence of three temperatures and three glass types on the light output of an oscilloscope tube using a two-factor factorial design. We can see that we have nine observations of five columns. Glass and temp are the factors, mean is the response variable, the light output, SD is the standard deviation, and the last column shows the compact ladder display indicating significant differences by Tuckey's test. Glass and Tuckey are defined as characters, and temp, mean, and SD are numeric variables. If you need help on building a table with this information from the raw data, check my previous videos on performing the analysis of variance and the means comparison by Tuckey's test. So let's start our plot. We are going to use the function ggplot to build the scatter plots. The first argument is the data file, data summary, and the second argument is the aesthetics, where we define the x and y variables, temp and mean. However, if we run only this code, we will have a blank plot. So we need also to define the geom, in this case geom point, for the scatter plot. The final look of a specific ggplot object depends on the size and the aspect ratio used. Thus, instead of running the code and visualizing the plot in the plot window, I will save it in a suitable size and aspect ratio. The plots shown in this tutorial were built for a figure size 4 per 2.5 inches, width and height, and I suggest saving the final plot as a PNG file with 1000 dpi resolution. The plot shows the points for the mean with the temperature, however we cannot distinguish the glass type. To split the results by the glass type, we can define a different color using the argument color equal glass in the aesthetics of the ggplot function, and we can also define a different marker shape using the argument shape equal glass in the aesthetics of the geom point function. Now the three glass types can be identified both by the color and the marker shape. We can also add lines to connect the markers using the geom lines function, and we are going to link the line type to the glass type using the argument line type equal glass in the aesthetics. Now the three glass types can be identified both by the color, the marker shape, and the line type. The plot shows some overlap among the results, making it hard to distinguish a particular point. One technique to avoid the overlap is to spread the data in the x-axis. To do it, we are going to use the argument position equal position dodge. The width equal 5 means that the data is going to be spread over the width of 5 units from the x-axis. Now that we have avoided the overlap, we can add the error bars using the geom error bar function.
The arguments of the geometer or bar are the upper and lower limits of the bars that I have defined as the mean plus or minus the standard deviation columns from the data summary data set. We must also use the argument position equal position dot. Now we are going to correct two details. First, the error bars are too wide, so we are going to define the error width using width equal 5. And the legend on the right does not show the line type anymore if we compare to the previous one. This happens because a straight line for the legend of the error bar was added over it. We can use the argument show legend equal false to prevent it. So let's do it. Now the plot has all elements we need and we can start customizing it. Let's start by customizing the X and Y titles using the function labs. The next step is to change the overall theme of the plot. I have chosen the theme BW. Additionally, I will delete the major and minor grid lines as they are usually not used in scientific plots. And we are also going to transfer the legend to the upper left corner inside the plot using the function theme legend position. So let's do it. The arguments panel grid major and panel grid minor element blank are responsible for uh, not showing the grid lines. And the legend position C 0.1 and 0.7, and the arguments 0.1 and 0.7 are related to the legend position. They mean 10% of the plot width and 70% of the plot height. It seems that we are getting there. Let's finally add the compact ladder display to the plot using the geom text function. The label for the geom text function is the column turkey in the data file. We also need to use position equal position dodge. 5 in the same way we have used for the error bars and the arguments we just adjust the text location and we are also defining show legend equal false since we do not want legend for the letters. The next adjustment is to customize the range and the breaks from the x and y axis. To customize the x and y axis, we are going to use the function scale x continuous and scale y continuous. The x axis range is already good, but we are going to define the axis breaks to agree with the data using the argument breaks 100, 125, and 150. For the y axis, we are going to expand it a bit using the limits. 450 and 1450, and we are going to define the breaks as a sequence starting at 500, finishing at 1400, and step 300. The plot is already looking very good, but there is still room for improvement. It seems that the shape markers are too small for a proper visualization. I will increase the shape markers using size equal 3 and apply some transparency, alpha equal 0.4, to avoid hiding the error bars. Both arguments are in the jump point function. The 
now we can easily distinguish the markers and we can still see the error bars. As a final customization step, I will show you how to change the color palette for the plot. To change the color palette, we are going to use the Scale Color Brewer function and I have chosen the Dark 2 palette. And here we have our final plot. This scatter plot is suitable for any presentation and also for written reports. The plot shows the mean, the standard deviation, and the compact ladder display showing significant differences by Tuckey's test. The results from each glass type can be identified by the color, by the marker shape, and by the line type, making it colorblind friendly and also suitable to be printed in grayscale. I hope this tutorial was useful to you. If yes, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I see you next time.